my son here in uh, Long Island, New York. And I've got Dan Keller is my co-host. What's up, Big Dan? Hey, good morning. Good morning from Seattle. Yeah, where, what's, what do you got in the background there? I'm just sitting on my back porch, man. I was out fishing all day yesterday, and I got a busy morning of just uh, follow-up calls. And so no better place than to do it in my back, uh, backyard here. It's a beautiful backyard. Good, good one. It looks, it looks beautiful. And those, those pictures on the Puget Sound looked amazing yesterday. Unreal. Congrats on an amazing day with your son out on the, out on the, the water catching yeah. salmon. Yeah. So, so guys, we've got an awesome call today. I am doing, we're doing a full top producer interview with Chong Yi. Chong, welcome to the Tuesday interview, buddy. Hey, guys. How are you? We're doing good. So uh, it was great seeing you at Mastermind in person. For those of you that don't know Chong, I mean, he's an awesome loan officer. You're going to know a lot more about him in a few minutes here. Uh, he's done over a thousand total cost analysis, so he is definitely a member of the Mortgage Coach Tribe. Uh, his, his coach is Tim Brahim, and uh, we talked about that last time a little bit when we were doing our last interview. And I did about a 20-minute interview following up to the Mastermind event, and I'm like, I need a full hour with Sean. Uh, you know, the theme of today's call is going to be how to turn your perfect loan process into a competitive advantage that helps you get more referrals from your partners, like realtors, like financial planners. So, so Chong, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your, your mortgage practice, what market you're in, and then let's, let's unpack this together, Dan and I. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, man, I got to tell you before we start, uh, you know, I was a little jittery here. I'm a little nervous. Um, I've, I've spoken in front of, uh, you know, large crowds, and I've been on TV and, you know, on the stage in Vegas, and I felt more nervous this time than having all of those put together. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 th I thought about doing a shot, and I asked my team if that was cool, and they said, uh, absolutely not, not even. <laughs> so I'm here very sober and very excited. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, as in my team and I, we're in D.C. Uh, we're uh, as, in particular in Rockville, Maryland. Um, it's about 20, 30 minutes from, from Washington, D.C., and um, now we've been in the business, well, I've been in business for about 15 years. Uh, well, not quite, i almost there, and, you know, I think that I really started getting into it and understanding it, uh, you know, after we built the team and, 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 and figured out exactly what we're about to talk about today. Like that, that like kind of like put it in place for us. So yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to be here talking with you guys and, uh, and, and you know, having some fun. John, tell, cool. tell, us, uh, tell us about your production over the last few years. Yeah. So we've been, in, we've been in transition. So um, we've moved a couple times and not that that's a big deal, but, um, it does affect us. We're um, we typically do about about sixty seventy million. Um, last year we did about forty. Um, uh, we're looking at probably eighty, hopefully to like a hundred this year. Um, nice, nice work. Thank you. Thanks. This month is going to be awesome. And it's, it's hard not to wake up every day and not smile when you have <laughs> like all those loans looking at check. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. And tell us a little bit about your team, so we know the team that's driving the production. Because it looks, from what you told me, you closed twenty loans last month. You're doing thirty-four this month. Uh, describe your team for us. Yeah, so we have, um, and actually, Dan, you'd appreciate this. Uh, I'm an ex-core guy, so nice. um, I have what we call a, a front-end person, which is an LP one. Uh, we have a second end. Uh, Second person, a uh, second loan partner, um, and and uh, her name is Jen actually, and she's about the greatest you're going to find. But she takes all of our stuff from contract to close. Um, we have a loan officer on my team that basically keeps me in line <laughs> and make sure that uh, you know she's following up on all the stuff that uh, you know that we should be doing. Um, and we we have a brand manager um, who does our social media and our marketing. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically the gist of our. We do have another loan officer who has a loan partner, and uh, you know we're all about doing the same process because we do believe that uh, you know repetitive or you know consistency is what brings um, you know brings about well not just consistency and efficiency but, but all together all you know just doing more loans, uh, doing it efficiently and, and as quickly as possible. 
And then, of course, there's me. I'm the knucklehead that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you uh, when you've got uh, you mentioned you have a junior LO or a, or or a loan officer on your team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, are you coach? Is that a younger person or is that a veteran? Are you coaching them up? Yeah. So so you know, Dan and Dave, I'm I'm 25. So uh, you know, to have anyone younger than me is is going to be a little difficult. I'm just kidding. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's all about bringing on. Um, when we brought her on, she was doing production, but you know, I'm going to tell you right now, she's going to be the future of, of our business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we actually have two loan officers that are going to be the future of our, our business. So yes, it's all about um, coaching. It's all about talking about what I know or, or maybe what I don't know. And we could actually, you know, we, we mastermind and talk about it all the time. But it's all about, like uh, doing doing what I know, what I what I've done to be successful, and passing it on to to them. And uh, and, you know, I, I, I've come to realize, like, at this point, I, I enjoy doing alone, but I think I enjoy, like, talking about how to make other people better. I think mean, that, that, yeah. that's the driving force in my business. And I'm sure yeah. by Dan. Yeah. You know, I think there's no, better, there's no better teacher to have in the industry than Tim Brahim on the perfect loan process, right? I think every great, every great loan officer has – probably most likely watched that video interview with Dave or a coaching call that's recorded on the internet from Tim Brahim on the perfect loan process, the handoff. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really, I'm really excited to learn from you today on, on, you know, how you've taken kind of some coaching and other aspects of the industry, bundled it up with what Tim, Tim teaches and then how you're bringing it to not only your team, your community, your realtors, and then your marketplace. So yeah, I'm, I'm pumped up about that. When Dave asked me to come on today, I was pretty excited because um, um, Tim Brahim's a stud. Um, and he's a, he's a guy that I, from afar, I've never met the guy. I've gone to a couple of different conferences with the guy. But um, from afar, I have, uh, uh, and through, through Dave, learned a ton from that guy. So why don't you, as we kind of get into that transition, the perfect loan process, I know Dave just texted me. He's having some internet reception issues. So um, why don't you talk to us about some of the things that you've learned um, from working with, with Tim and how you're implementing that into your business right now? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's funny. We were, we were talking about this, um, and, and we talked about, like, at what point did everything change uh, from just regular – producing loan officer to, you know, basically like, it's like getting it right at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, I look at, I look at the first, the perfect loan process or the PLP as we call it. Mm-hmm. Basically our, I mean, you know, if, if I'm going to go into battle, I want to have the biggest, baddest possible, right? Yeah. You know, it's like my machine gun. Um, it, you know, it's, it just gives you the confidence to be able to uh, I mean, just you know, every single day talk, you know, talk to realtors or talk to any referral partner because you know you've got it in place, right? Um, you got something that's going, that's going to um, give you the capability of, of, of having an offense. Like I, I talked about using it as, as going on offense, right? Mm-hmm. Before we go there, let's talk about how, you know, how, how it came across, right? So um, I like you, Dan. I um, was a huge fan of, of everything that Tim was doing, and I saw him on stage, and I was like, "Man, how do I be that? Guy? How can I be that guy?" Right. So I looked at all the videos. I mean, the you know the the loan toolbox, like that thing is genius, right? So just something, someone that we look uh, from afar, but uh, take it a little bit step closer. Um, I have basically two mentors in our business. Tim is one of them, and I've had a few more, but but two most recently, and. Um, you know, correct strength from an office that, that I used to work, uh, Apex Home Loans over here in Rockville. Um, he's really the one that actually got me into, you know, thinking about, about Tim's program. He actually introduced me to it. Um, but really, really using it and implementing it in our everyday pra- uh, practice. So, um, so it was like, so Tim and Craig are the ones that really got us going. And once we got there, you know, just like clicked. Like all of a sudden I realized, you know, Having, having it in place, like doing something the same way every single time on every single loan, it gives you, it brings you confidence. And that confidence takes you from, uh, you know, like when you're talking to a realtor or anyone, it, 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 you're coming from a place of abundance as opposed to coming from a place of scarcity. 
And, and by that, I mean, you know, the, the way we talk and the way we, the way we act and, and the way we uh, do things are different if we're coming from a place of like, confidence and knowing that, you know what, if, if, this, if I don't hit it off with this realtor, then it's okay because I got a ton, ton, of, other, ton of others that I can work with. Um, and, and you know, for other, you know, as opposed to coming from a place where it's like, man, I really need, need this referral source. I really need this loan. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if, if you're talking that way, there's a sense of desperation that comes out. And I feel like um, having that confidence to be able to know that every single loan is going to get in there, like, efficiently done properly, closing, obviously, on time, but doing the, the little things that we do that makes us, uh, you know, over the top different than others. Yeah, I think, and, and let's try, let's maybe go back and forth on this for a couple of minutes. I think there is uh, any producing loan officer right now needs to listen to this. I think there's a fine line um, between being overconfident, potentially arrogant, and then being confident and secure and knowing how much value you bring in a relationship in the business. Uh, in the mortgage business, when you're talking with a referral partner, when you're talking with a borrower, um, I've talked about this before on on Dave's calls. I think great salespeople have what's called walk away power. You're able to walk away from a deal and be like, you know what? It's going to be more of a pain working with this borrower because they're going to shop us after we lock their rate. They're going to shop us all the way until we send out the final CD, and probably then even after that, or we can cut ties and we can go out and we can go get another borrower. Same thing with realtors. So is that a mindset thing with you? Because I know with me, it was, it clicked a couple of years ago and I I know previous coaches in my industry, all leads, more leads solves all problems. Right. And so it kind of got to the point where I had a decent pipeline, but my mentality switched from, you know what, I'm not going to worry about the money, potential closings, potential commissions, um, I'm going to go out and add value. I'm going to have a mindset switch, mindset change where I'm going to go out and add so much value that I'm going to attract borrowers to want to work with me. And if they don't, hey, I'm going to go attract more. So talk to me kind of about maybe your mindset and when that shifted for you. Yeah, Dan, you hit it right on the nose, man. Like, you know, you're talking about coming from a place of abundance, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a point in my career, and the same thing with Aaron on my team, um, there was such a good feeling when I was able to punt that deal mm-hmm. that was an ugly deal, right? Yep. Um, that I knew it was going to take all of our time. And, you know, it, it almost got to the point where we're like punting deals all the time, which obviously we wanted to. Um, but it was, there's this great feeling. There's this, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say there was a weight that went off, you know, that, that was off my shoulders, but I felt mm-hmm. exactly what it is. Like, I didn't need that loan, or I don't need to have that, that realtor um, or that referral partnership that was going to drop me down. Like, I don't need to have like negativity in my life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's all about, like, you know, once again, the, the mindset is exactly what is, and you hit it again, right? And I was like, mindset is exactly the way that it is. Like you should be, you know, if, if we're coming for a place of abundance and looking to serve people, yeah, you want to serve the people that are going to appreciate it, right? And that, that, that's just that client that's also yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's a different, different environment when you're working yeah. in, that, in that world, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as opposed to the time suck, you know, where, they're going to like work you to death and, you know, and it's like, that's their only deal. And, and mm-hmm. if that happened, then you're going to be, you know, they're not going to pay the mortgage, like that sort of thing. Like, yeah. I was like, coach those people up to be able to work with them as opposed to just working with them right away. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I think, I think everyone needs to listen up to this right now. I think we're in a refinance, uh, a little mini refinance boom where, you know, I think everyone's, um, I'm seeing this a lot right now with, with lenders that don't have a lot going on. They're going and they're, they're throwing everything at the borrower to get them to work with them. And it's the, it's the most important deal that they have just to ink this refinance or this purchase. And I think when you come from a position of, and I think we've all bought things from people before where we were like, gosh, man, that guy needed my sale more than I needed that product. And I think there's an art and a science around sales. And, and, and I think people like you and I understand that, that when you have a professional presentation, a repeatable presentation that adds value, when you have the mindset of coming from abundance, when, when you can instill confidence in the borrower that you're the professional, like it comes from the presentation because when I meet a borrower, and correct me if I'm wrong, if it's any different in Maryland from Seattle, when I meet a borrower, we have one thing in common and it's rate, right? So it's what is your rate 
And as salespeople, we've got to get the focus. There's, because you and I both know that there's more to it than rate. There's process, there's experience, there's so many other things. And so I wanted to kind of give that kind of segue into the perfect loan process and how you start it. Because there's more than just, it's, listen, loan officers, it's more than just scripts. And I know you're going to say this too. Scripts are a part of it. Dialogue's a part of it. But you got to practice this thing. I come from the college and professional baseball arena where you just don't practice a couple times and show up and play a game. You practice for nine months to play for two or three months, right? So dialogue's important, but walk us through kind of your mindset and your process of that initial, that perfect loan process, starting from initial contact into the process. And then do me a favor as, as you can, let us know when you integrate mortgage coach into that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we integrated right away. Um, as a matter of fact, um, and just to go back a little bit, uh, the difference between Seattle and Washington is that we're better looking. Dan, if you haven't <laughs> I love kidding. that. It's just kidding. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, I, we put, we used mortgage coach in the very beginning and actually I shared a copy of our, uh, our, our, our PLT with Dave earlier, but, and yeah. I don't know where to find it, but, um, in any event, uh, we, we start right away. So we, we deal with them from the minute the lead comes in, right? So after our initial conversation or consultation, I mean, it goes right out. Like, you know, we want to figure out, you can look at it a couple of different ways, right? So we look at it from standpoint of like, you know, if they're not certain as to what price point they're looking at, we give them, you know, four different price points. Um, we give them, you know, if, if they know they have an idea, like they want 500000 or if they want a certain payment uh, point, then we show them how we can, you know, get to that get to that point so we can have you know we can show them 10 percent down you know 20 percent down maybe you know one with finance mi one without like that sort of thing okay. uh, like to tailor to from what that conversation you know came about like initially so like you know for instance we just did one recently um and it's like we did a pca and it's a mozilla lead and interesting enough they found this property and we did PCA, and it's a zillow lead that they're not shopping us now and i'm not gonna what they say this but yeah. Very impressive with, with what we did, and what, what I, it was simple as simple as like showing them, look, you can put twenty percent down on this property, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to do fifty, you know, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars of work. So yeah. let me show you what it's going to look like payment wise if we didn't put twenty percent down and we put five percent down. <clears throat> um, and walking through it with them, they it wasn't just rate; like they we, we didn't talk about rate once. It was all about putting them in a position where they're going to be able to maximize their, you know, their efficiency on the money they want to invest in that property. Um, and because of that, like, once again, we still haven't talked about rates. And this is those, right? Because, because we weren't, we didn't initiate the call with, with, with rate. We initiated with, you know, what are your goals? Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. What do you accomplish? You know, I think those are the things that we should be asking um, all the time. Um, and that's the, the first part of our, of our PLP, like, and, you know, from that moment on, we had a series of things we sent out, bomb videos, you know, build a report. Um, and then uh, once we get the pre-approval, we have touch and base with them every Wednesday. I think, you know, the Wednesday pre-approval call. Yep. Right? Um, and um, we're constantly doing this so, so we don't lose the deal, but, you know, we're just, you know, doing revised the TCAs for like when they when the research look at the property, right? Yeah. So, you know, at this point, we're working hand in hand with, um, with a realtor partner because yeah. two things need to happen. One, we need to make sure that the client is comfortable with us, right? Because not only are they going to work with us, we want to make sure that we secure the, the transit or the deal for the realtor. It's a partnership. Yeah. Okay. Throughout the process, we're edifying the, we're edifying, um, the, the realtors. And then mm -hmm. we're going to something. Yeah, yeah. So, great. Awesome. I want to pause right there because... I've got two questions that just came in. Jenny Van has a question and then Coach Savage is back and he's got a question too. But real quick, Jenny asked, and this was kind of, I had a question around this too. So thank you for the question, Jenny. Jenny says, so before having them agree to an application, do you send a TCA based on the prequal conversation? So are you just getting some information out to them based on your initial phone combo conversation before you've ran credit, before you've ran an app? Absolutely, absolutely, because I think that meeting with mortgage coach, meeting with TCA, right away, first of all, and I don't know about your market, but in our market, nobody's doing it, 
right? And Dave, we're going to try to fix that for you. We're going to try to get more people to use it. Uh, but nobody's using it. So for us, it's it's a weapon, you know? Yep. A way of being different than the next person. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I have this conversation where it's like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, we were getting this loan estimates or loan, you know, they still call them good faith estimates, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at all of them and I see yours and yours is so much different. Yeah. And, Stand out. Yeah. A lot of times you can send it to them and you put the video on there and it doesn't even matter what you put on there because they look, they're looking at it like a maze. Yeah. You know, maze, like, holy cow, what is this? This is so different. So right away, that gives us a competitive advantage over winning that offer. And 95% of the time, or 99% of the time, I can tell you, do an application um, just from the mortgage coach, you know, just from the people that So, so Chong, I know the way you open a conversation with someone is different than the average loan officer. And I, I love the way this call started off because I think this will be powerful for loan officers doing a lot of business and loan officers that are new in the business who have never closed 10 loans in a month before. So, so Tim has this, and you've heard it before, his scripting on how he positions the, you know, uses the mortgage coach. I'm going to help you with this loan and I'm going to be your lender for life. I would love to just hear the Chong version of I'm going to be your lender for life. And I don't know if you, you know, have a script and it's literally like, this is what I say every time, or whether you have these talking points that you just check off the list, but I would love to just hear how you position yourself at the point of sale to be the lender for life and you know integrate some of those things you've learned from Tim. So it's awesome you just said that because this is very Timified, as I like to say. It's a whole lot of Tim um, in this and it works. And so you know to give you an idea it would be hey Dave how are you or you know it, it's so awesome that we're working together. Um, I just want you to know two things. One uh, our goal is to put you in a position right now uh, as it stands right now, the best position possible to meet your long-term and short-term financial goals. However, the mortgage market is a never, it's an always changing, never the same thing. And we're going to be evolving as, as time goes on. And, you know, there could be situations where we're going to, we're going to come into a recession and which we're going to be headed to, by the way, but there's going to be situations where the market's going to go up and down. So here's the deal. Like I never ever want you to overpay for your mortgage. So it's my job. It's basically my goal. Uh, my goal in life is to make sure that you don't overpay. So I'm going to manage your mortgage for you throughout the life of the loan, of your loan. And I'm going to monitor the market so that whenever there's a opportunity for us to restructure your loan and to save you money, because ultimately that is the goal. I want you to save money. I'm going to give you a call and say, hey, Dave, it's time. And when I say, Dave, it's time, it means get the application done because we're going to save you, save you some money. And I'm going to send you uh, a total cost analysis that's going to break down how much money we're going to save, what that money, what that's going to look like over time, you know, as it relates to if you pay it towards your mortgage, or if you want to, you can, you know, we can redirect it into something that's going to earn you more money. But yeah, basically we're going to manage your mortgage for you and I'm going to tell you when it's time. Love, love that. And for every loan officer on this call, I would just challenge you to really think about how you position yourself at the point of sale. Because when I interview loan officers who are closing 20 loans a month consistently, 10 loans a month consistently, over 100, over 200 year loans annually, how they position themselves is differently. And then they say something big, mm -hmm. really disruptive and personally valuable. And then they like execute. It's not like, oh, and now here's a few worksheet. I mean, it's, it's, it's now there is a delivery and an experience that aligns with what we said. You know, Dan, you're doing a great job of leading this interview. So I'm going to hand it back to you for the quarterback. I'm going to run off the field. If I want to come back in, I'll, and I have internet, I'll, I'll be back. But keep it, keep it rocking, brother. You're killing it. Yeah. No, Chong's killing it. Great. Incredible content. I mean, I think that's what this community needs more. This is why the mortgage coach community is so powerful is you have people like you, Chong, that are coaching with Tim and that are a disciple of Tim. And then you have others that are a disciple of coach Hart and books. Man. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and so I love, I love dialogue. I love uh, looking at different ways where I can improve. Like, like Dave just said, our delivery, that first conversation in sales is so important. First impressions. I mean, I just attended a, um, a 
a leadership or speaking event that uh, I know is endorsed by the mortgage coach community with Renee Rodriguez. And it was the whole idea around that is how do I fine tune and amplify my message up front? So I think it's, it's big. I think you do have to say something and I, and I want to talk about this too. You have to say something that like anchors them or intrigues them to want to work with you or to see you as that, that leader that advisor that's going to help put them in the best position to achieve their goals. I don't know about your market, but the Seattle market is still hot. There's multiple offers. Home values are, are crazy through the roof. That's the number one complaint I get here is that, gosh, it's, 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 uh, it's super expensive to live up here. And so help us if you have, if you have some dialogue around this, how do you upfront as a part of that perfect loan process throw two or three things in regards to your value propositions into those conversations. So they're like, wow, like I've talked to B of A or I've talked to other lenders, my credit union and man, the conversation didn't go the way it did with Chong. What are some of the things? So continue along the, the process with dialogue and really how you anchor people in before you really know that they're committed to working with you. Yeah. So um, I think there has to be a nice marriage between technology and just to go, you know, get on the phone and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, you think about all the disruption that we've had. I think, you know, if you go too far into the, the tech, the technology side where yep. you're doing technology and not get trying to get face to face or actually yep. talk to someone. Yep. Um, and I think that at that point that becomes an issue. So there's gotta be this nice marriage. Like if they were up to me, I'd love to meet with everyone face to face in my office with me, with my computer so I can show them, you know, go over to TCC with them together, right? That would be the ultimate, the ultimate situation. So I can sit there and, you know, because if you get someone in front of me, I can pretty much tell you that we're gonna we're gonna work together, right? Unfortunately, that's just not the case, as you know, right? I mean, that's why we're doing the video. That's why we're doing uh, video introduction. That's why we're doing the TCAs because we have to strive to work with the, you know, and evolve with the way the the world is going. But I think ultimately, ultimately, it's the advice portion of it um, that really, that really is going to is going to be a driving force. Um, the problem is that a lot of times they think that um, I think our the buyers nowadays think that everything can be done online, and I don't think that a lot of times they even realize like the stuff that that we can we can assist them with, right? Um, and just going back to that that conversation I had with that Zillow lead, I mean, my goodness, they they wouldn't have had that conversation, right? <clears throat> They would just said, okay, you know, 20% down, great, your interest rate is here, I'm done, right, for the most part. They're not really listening to them. And I think that a lot of it is because they don't have the qualifications mm -hmm. to really go deeper and talk about what the mortgage is, right? I'm a huge fan in, in the belief that, um, you know, and a lot of people consider mortgage debt. And, of course, yep. it is, right? But, and, and tell me what you think about this, Dan, but I'm a huge fan in thinking of, look, the mortgage is more of a financial tool. Mm -hmm than it is debt, right? So if you think about it, if we're looking to, if you've got $100,000 to invest and you wanna, you wanna put $100,000 and buy like Apple stock, right? Well, you need $100,000 to buy that stock, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you've got 100 grand, you know, you could buy a $700,000 property or $800,000 property and own this $800,000 asset with only $100,000 $100, out of pocket. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and not only is it a great investment tool, but, but obviously you have to have some place to live. Yeah. So why not own the, the why not own the place that you're gonna live? And and I think if you put this all together, I think yeah. um, we have to come from we have to understand it and help people educate them to, to understand that you can leverage this and use this as something that's gonna grow your wealth over time, as opposed to well, you know, crap, I have I got a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Well, no, you get six hundred thousand dollars mortgage, but you have a million dollar a property. You see yes. what I mean? So yeah. there's, there's a lot of things that we need to do as educators, and, and you know, a lot of this we hear a lot of this uh, mortgage advisor thing, and I think that the difference between being a mortgage advisor and being just a person that thinks they're a mortgage or being a mortgage advisor is that actually giving the advice, right? Yeah, deeper and listening. Yeah. Uh, so the technology will get us there, yep. but I think we have to we have to really understand what their needs are. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think there's so many people that want to throw out titles. I know Jeremy Forcier posted something in the group the other day that said, hey, if you're not calling your past clients for refinances right now, don't call yourself lender for life. And I think it's so important. Same thing. I mean, I do call myself 
a mortgage advisor. And I would actually like to call myself a financial educator, but I think it would confuse people. So I don't, so I stick with mortgage advisor, but I do the exact same thing that you do. And I, I, and I, and I probably, I don't want to say I take it a step further, but I add two or three things to that. And I take about five minutes after I use that analogy to really anchor in some financial education. And I use a similar analogy like you, there's nothing, there's no vehicle on this planet like purchasing real estate when it comes to investing. You can like use the Apple analogy. I use the stock analogy, same thing. But then I take it a little bit further and I say, along with those benefits, you have, uh, you have the ability to get a deduction, a property tax. Hold on real quick. Um, along with that, you have the ability to um, get money back from the IRS. You have the ability to inherit up here in Seattle and across the country nationally for the last, historically, the last 30 to 50 years, great appreciation. And then every single month, you're actually paying down your mortgage. And so I use a mortgage coach tool to pencil that out for five years and to show them that if you had below average rate of return on your real estate. So I use like 4%. The average up here in Seattle over 30 years is over 7.8%. So I use 4% and I net that out over five years. So if you can stay in your home for five years, you're going to have a 280% improvement in wealth compared to renting. And so, you know, I think by integrating that into your presentation, you're spot on. You go from loan officer to mortgage advisor, you go from commodity to value and then you, there's value proposition number one. And then you can start adding other value propositions into your presentation. So um, I want to keep, I want to, we're, we're, I think we're, we're doing really good on time. Um, but I want to keep on your process. I know Dave's back. Dave, you have any questions real well, quick? I do, a, a couple things. I want to make sure we reward people who are asking comments on Facebook. Uh, if you ask them during the live call, we'll ask them live. And even if you have questions while watching the recording, post your questions and comments. So um, Tara Atwood said, hey, I, I love your question. Love how you're setting yourself up. And she says, I'm doing that too. But she says, but what, what about when the client says, that's great, but what's your rate? And, and so they kind of take that high level, I'll manage your mortgage for life. Um, what, do you, what do you say? How do you, how do you, the person is really like, hey, let's just set this out and give me the rate. How do you handle that buyer? If you could just give us some objection handling and some scripting on that, John. Is this um, from a, a past client where I'm calling back, letting them know? Letting them know no, I, th I think let's, let's assume this is a, a referral with a, you know, aggressive buyer that's rate sensitive and you've, you've kind of tried to take them through your perfect process and they're, they're pushing you to accelerate and net it out for me. You know, how would you, how would you, you know, how many times until you, well, my rate's this, you know, or, or do you have, uh, you know, kind of a final way to handle it? Just give us a sequence of how you handle that escalation. I have a, a thought I want to share, and it might even, Dan, you might be ready to answer this too, because I think this comes up a lot for folks. Yeah. So, Charlie, how do you handle it? So, if it's a, so, if it's, if it's a, if it's a client that I've had, I, I, and I knock on words, I say is like, question too often. It just happens at the end after we talked about what the savings are. Um, and then, you know, usually it's in, in my mortgage code, my CCA that I send out. Um, but in reality, a lot of times, and a lot of times for that, for that situation, I don't even need a PCA because I've already, I've already sold it to them in the beginning when they did the purchase. And I told them when the time comes, I'm going to see happen. But if it's a new referral and, and ultimately, um, I can't, if you can't send out a, a TCA without knowing their situation. So you will have that, you will have that conversation. So I always look at it as this. I always say, listen, um, interest rates are very important, obviously, um, because that's what payment is going to be. However, uh, before we go there, let's talk about what our future goals are. What is your goal now and what is your goal in the future? Like, do you want is it just to save some money? Or are you looking to, to pay down the principal of your home to pay off the mortgage sooner? Or are you looking to grow your wealth by redirecting the savings toward into something that's going to earn you bigger return on investment than putting it right back into the mortgage? Um, and, you know, after all of that, then we can talk about the rate. And once we talk about the rate, and by the way, we're going to get, get you the best interest rate possible. Uh, but we can talk about maybe potentially even taking a higher interest rate, maybe paying some closing costs. 
maybe we're going to take a higher interest rate because guess what? You know, you may, you know, we may need to do a cash out refinance in case of debt. There's a lot of things we can explore here, but before we go there, let's talk about these things and talk about your goals now and the future before we talk about that. Like it. Okay. Uh, some scripting I I used back in the day, and I I've, I've heard a lot of top producers do it, and and I know Chong, you do a version of this. It's always like getting a few more questions answered, so you can always say, "Oh, again, great question. I'm going to tell you exactly what your interest rates are. I just need to ask you a few more questions, and then I'll tell you exactly what your cash to close are and your interest rate." So the word "exactly" is a power word, and and you always want to be a challenger sales rep. And to me, a challenger sales rep is someone that's not afraid of a little constructive tension. Yeah. You're the yeah. leader. So don't be afraid to be a leader, get yeah. constructive tension, not unconstructive tension. Uh, so Tara, great question, but I want you to think, I need to be a leader. I need a few more questions. You always need a few more questions. I just need to tell you a few more questions and I'm gonna tell you exactly mm -hmm. what your options are. I'm gonna give you a high, I'm gonna give you a low. Um, so, guys, keep the questions coming. Dan, back to you. And then one more yeah. um, kind of coaching perspective. If you could, in the last 10 minutes, let's make sure we – I think we'll have unpacked the perfect process. Let's make sure we get into, okay, you have this perfect process. How do you actually leverage that with an agent to get more referrals? So let's make sure we save 10 minutes to get into that scripting. Um, Dan, back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Tara, I want to, I want to go back to Tara's question because I think it's a lot of my loan officers and a lot of loan officers that I talk to in different Facebook groups are having this, this issue right now. Um, how do you handle rate? How do you handle objections up front? And it's, this is so relevant. I think Dave, what you said, Chong, what you said is incredible. I use one. So what I want to do up front when I get objections is I want to, I don't want to come across like I'm hiding anything. I think you guys did a great job. I add one more thing to that. That is a great question, and I say this. In fact, many of my borrowers right now are asking that same exact question. I'm confident that we're going to get you a very competitive rate, but I need to know a couple more things to answer that question for you. So what I do is I group them in with everyone else so they don't feel kind of weird that they're asking that question. And then I come across as everyone asks this. I'm confident to handle this question that you just threw up to me. The one last thing too, Tara, that I want to say, I, before I got in the mortgage industry, I was a college pro baseball coach and I was a hitting coach. I specialized in teaching hitting. Okay. My philosophy was really simple. Know what you're looking for and be on time. If you're looking, if you're going up to bat and you're looking for a fastball, if you get a fastball, you crush it. Don't swing at a curveball. Know what you're looking for and be on time. It's the same thing in sales, you guys. It's the same thing. Know your objections up front. When you're talking to someone that doesn't know you, know going into that phone call. The only thing we have in common, Chunk, the only thing you and I have in common right now is rate. So understand that they're going to ask us about our rates and our fees. So get really good at answering that question or making them feel like you're comfortable taking them through that process. So many people up front, they butcher that initial question and then it sets you down a path that it's really hard to recover from. So I love it. You guys crushed that by the way. I, I, Dan, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. Like you're right. And that, that is something. And I, and I love that you do that because I need something similar. Uh, I think that if you, if you are looking, if you're, if you get nervous when that question is asked, I think it's, it's where you're going to lose every time. Yeah. Obviously, that's where we're going to be going to at some point in the conversation. So if it's, if you have to know how to address that question, for sure. I love it, man. That's yep. great. Yeah, be able to embrace the tough questions. That's the one thing that I think the biggest transition in my business as a professional, as a professional salesperson, happened about three years ago, or actually two to three years ago, where I embraced tough questions. I embraced those tough situations with borrowers, whether it be over the phone or face-to-face, or even with a realtor, hey, we're going to need two days, a two-day extension. Appraisal came in late, or we have an issue with this or that. Embrace those tough conversations. Get used to turning those tough conversations into positives. And again, it goes back to that mentality where you're like, dude, I got this. I got this. Yeah. This is cake. So, eat frog, right? Okay. Yeah, I've got a few more questions, and I want to do maybe a role play with you so we can add a little bit more value to, to mortgage coach, uh, the mortgage coach community. Um, how are you implementing video 
into your business? Are you doing, are you, are you making a video with your TCAs? Talk to us about that and how that might look. So, um, yeah, 100%. I think video is, is super important. And I think it's probably the most important aspect of what we do uh, moving forward because, you know, unfortunately, you know, your batting average, to use a baseball analogy, yeah. batting average goes down um, if you don't have the, have the face-to-face. So, yeah. like, I, I don't know the exact number, but if you go meet with someone face-to-face, your average is much higher. Yeah. Um, if you go, if you just talk to them on the phone, it goes out. At least you're building rapport. So, mm-hmm. I face-to-face thing is the key to this, and I think that um, video is the way to do it for sure. If you're not putting a video and and, and attaching it to your, um, you know, to your TCAs, you're I think it's a big mistake. I think you're you're missing out for sure. Um, but I think you know, I think we. Oh my goodness, that's me. Um, <laughs> we, we send video. You know, we use bomb bomb videos a lot, to, you know, as an introduction to realtors. We use them as an introduction to, um, you know, to our clients, right? And basically, it's something that's different. Like, and it, and it gives you that, you know, it, it gives you that. Oh my god, well, there's a, it's the face of the name thing. I know that guy. That's that's the guy I talked to yesterday. Oh my gosh, I know that guy. He just called me right now. Like, so I, I think that video should be in every aspect of it, and all throughout our process, we're doing videos. Um, not to just introduce ourselves to the, you know, to the borrower or the buyer. Um, talking about intro videos to buyer's agents. We're talking intro videos to, to the listing agents. Um, and then, you know what? I'd love to, to, to connect my TCA video with the buyer's agent because on that video, we're going to be talking about how great the realtors are. And then that kind of gives us a, like an entry, like especially if you haven't worked with that person before. It gives you an entry way to get in there to, have, to start a conversation about having a future I mean, it's, and, and as time goes on and everyone does it, everyone starts doing more video, I think you seem to be get more creative about how we're sending video. That makes sense. Did you, did you guys catch that, how he, you know, video is essential? And, and did you notice there's, there's multi-channels, there's no one way to do video. Like, it's why we built video into the Mortgage Coach platform, because when you're talking about numbers and mortgage options, you want to have video integrated into the conversation. We're seeing more and more mortgage professionals in the community just do text video. Like Josh Bell, when I interviewed him, he talked about how every single borrower he talks to, he's just pulling up his camera on a tripod, sending a video. So there's kind of like the needs list video, and then there's the mortgage coach video, and then the bomb bomb video, the email video when you're sending a one to many message. So, John, just real quick, I want to make sure we get your video playbook. We know you're adding a video to you know, what percentage of your TCAs do you think are getting a video? Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to try to say a hundred percent. Um, a lot. more than 90%. Yeah. 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 But, but okay. there's time. If it's just, if it, you know, if you've already sent one and you want to do a mortgage coach edge, as opposed to, you know, you focus on that part more so than, than sending the you know, video, but try to get it so, on every, single, every single uh, TCA you send out. A lot. How, how often do you just do it a text-to-text video? You know, like you and I did to prepare for today's call. How often are you doing that? I'm doing that more and more now because I was, like, something hit, you know, you know, at the mastermind. He was talking about, like, you know, not everyone's going to open up your email, but everyone's going to open up, your te- you know, a text message, right? So I've been doing a lot more of that, and I'm going to do probably as, as uh, for the most part, I think I'm going to do more texts um, than emails moving forward. But I find that it's, it's more engaging from a text message. No, because it doesn't always open on email, you know? So, so two homework assignments for anyone who hasn't listened to the call. My interview with Brian Manning, down below, check it out. It was a full one-hour top producer interview. And then I did a 20-minute interview with Josh Metal on just personal connection. And both of them um, would be very on point if you're listening to this and you want to go deeper on that. Uh, Dan, any, any questions on, any more questions on video before we, uh, transition into realtor referrals and how we're using the perfect loan process to get more referrals? Yeah. I mean, I, I would just piggyback on what you've said. It's so important in today's market. It's competitive. Um, when, when you're to stand out, that's what I've been able to do up here in Seattle is, you know, I have a, um, a video series that I have my team send out. When we send out a pre-approval letter, the listing agent, everyone gets a video. 
when we get mutual acceptance, everyone gets a video. And so what I've recently started to do, because I too do the Tuesday, it's Tuesday, I'm doing Tuesday status updates today, you know. Um, and, and so what I've started to do with some, not all, but some realtors, listing agents, is just sending that real quick text video. And what it does is it brings a, a reality to life. It brings some professionalism. Um, you're standing out. And not to mention, most loan officers aren't doing that. And the ones that are doing it, I guess where I would say where I'm working on getting an advantage is being better scripted in regards to what I'm saying to them. Like Brian, that yeah, if you're listening to this call, go back and listen to Brian Manning interview and what he's doing. It's, it's pretty much unscripted, but there's a format around what he's saying. And it's the same thing. Know what you're trying to get acro across, whether it's a listing agent or a borrower, be crystal clear on that. And then the video just opens up so many doors, more doors for opportunity than not doing it. So I think you're killing it with that. That's incredible. I don't, you're, you're beating me because I do 100% of my TCA don't get a video with it. So I need to up my TCA video game. Well, and I also think that um, it's not just the TCAs, obviously, right? Um, I mean, just this morning we had a, uh, I had a realtor, a listing agent, uh, uh, well, we won the deal. But basically it was, and he didn't say that it was because of, because of the fact that I sent the text video, but yeah. it was because we were different and I was able to, um, I was able to illustrate how great the buyer was. Um, yep. And it was, it was just kind of like it, was, it stood out outside of what everyone else is doing, yep. right? And not everyone's even making a phone call, but no one's making a video. Yep. So I have to assume, I have to assume you're CCing at least your agent when you send a TCA to a client. Are you sending anything to listing agents in regards to, hey, mutual, here's the borrower's loan options look like or loan programs look like? Talk to us about that. So are you saying the listing agent? Yeah, for, for sure you're your buyer's agent, right? Yeah. Are you I doing anything with the listing share, Yeah, I don't want to share the TCA because I don't want them to know more than they need to know, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't put anything personal. Like, I don't talk about credit scores or anything like that. But mm -hmm. always, I'm always uh, – I'm, I'm mindful of that because I also don't want our buyer's agent to, to think, you know, not understand it. And if, if we're going to do it as a strategy, then I'm going to talk with, with my buyer's agent first to make sure it's cool. And I'm going to say, this is the reason why I think we should send this. Um, so, and we've done that in occasion, but as a practice, not, not unless we, we – Good, good. good. Yeah. No, I had, I had a feeling you were, you were looping in at least your agent up front on that. That's smart. I do the same thing. So yeah. they – and my agents love it. They're like, this is incredible from a, from a budgeting standpoint. Again, standing out because very oh, few of the officers are doing that. Yeah. For sure. and, and I can tell you what I do when I make the, the listing introduction, and that's always a huge win-win. You know? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna. I've got one more question for you, and I think Dave's gonna come in and try to close this thing down. But I got a big one for you, man. You have coached with a couple of uh, big coaches in the mortgage industry. Knowing what you know today, 2019, what advice would you give yourself pre-coaching with both of those those different coaches, or all, or all the coaches? What would you give your advice? Would you give yourself? Um, if you were getting in the industry right now or really trying to, you know, double or increase your business? I would say get tactical. Um, I would say don't just throw it in the wall and hope it sticks, right? Mm -hmm. I think there should be, um, on everything that, that you do, there should be an intention. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you should have, and I'm going to say the PLP, the perfect loan process, because once again, that's your hammer. Like that is what your confidence, you know, that, that's what you're going to take to war because you know that you've got it down and you're going to be better than everybody else, right? Yep. Yep. That place of abundance we talked about, right? So get that down. Yep. Get yourself um, scripted for sure, but get yourself in a habit of doing daily activities. Yep. Like, you know, Monday realtor calls or Tuesday uh, status calls, Wednesday pre-approvals, Thursday database, Friday VAP, like that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be in that order. It can be in any order to but do it where you're intentional, right? Do something every single day that's going to bring you prospecting or, or you know, bring in business through prospecting. I mean, that's, that's the, the first thing I would do. Um, the second thing would be, hey, you know, get your process down and you may not have a team, but so what, right? It's all about doing the same thing over and over until you need to bring someone else on, yep. but then just scale it, right? So you just, you know, you have everyone doing the same thing and just kind of assign tasks. So that's, I guess what I would do right away, 100% before I did anything if I started like. Okay. 
Love it. I love that. What what I'm gonna do is hey. well, go ahead, Dave. Hey guys, guys. Hey, real quick, the interview's been fantastic. If you're listening to this live, it's not too late to post a question. If you're listening to the recording, you know, please, what was your biggest takeaway? Um, if you got value from this, give it a like. Uh, you know, I'm so honored to have this, you know, be a leader in this mortgage coach community because there's so many great people adding so much great value. I guess, Chong, my, my last question, and then Dan, feel free to be the, the closer of the call, is what – Knowing that you have this perfect loan process, it makes you show up differently with realtors. And if you could, you know, provide some strategy and some scripting around how you, how you talk about your perfect loan process with your partners and, and any strategy on how you're using it to accelerate your referrals from your referral partners. Yeah, yeah. So for sure, um, you know, I'm big on, and, and, and I say this word, and it's kind of a private joke, but I'm big on empowerment. Um, and all that means is that, look, you build a team and you have to trust your team, right? You have to know that there's things that they do that are much better than the way I do it, right? And you have to understand to get out of your own way. So when you have, when you have the PLP, when you have the process, trust in it and give them the, the power to be able to do what they do to execute for you. And you know what? If they make a mistake, they make a mistake. We all make mistakes. That's, that's life. And we just you know, we learn from it and we fix it and we move on, right? So that's the, that's the first part, I would say. Um, and I don't know if you asked this question, Dave, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, um, because I do think that, um, you know, your process or the perfect loan process is something that's going to get you more deals, right? It, it's essentially, you know, so I have loan officer friends all the time that are talking about all these great ways that they're going to try to get business, right? And they're going to get in with this realtor and this financial planner and the CPA and they're doing all this great stuff. But when I asked them, when I talked to them about, about what they do, like, they have no idea. Like, mm -hmm. there's something in place. It's just kind of – everything's different all the time. And, and it's just hard for me. And, and Dave, uh, Dan, I'm using another baseball analogy, right? So, you know, you don't go to the plate and hit home runs right away, right? you got to learn how to hit the singles. you got to learn how to you know, hit, hit the ball opposite the field. you got to learn how to, to get on base. That's the bottom the, – that's the basis of, of the business. It's the same thing with, with what we do. We have to get our system in place and know confidently that's going to happen the same way every time. And then what you want to do is make sure you make little promises. And what, one of the stuff that I do um, is when we make the intro, and, and when we go, going back to the videos, you make the introduction video to the, to the client, to the buyer, to, or the borrower. I do it to the, the buyer's agent if I, I've never worked with them before. And I definitely do it with a listing agent, right? Mm -hmm. And all once I get the deal, like I'm big on making that thank you video slash call to the, to the and at that point I'm going to say, Hey, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to provide the financing for your gorgeous listing over on one. And what I want to do here is just give you a quick idea, a quick message of how we do things. You know, we're all about efficiency and being as communicative as possible. So what we're going to do is on, Every, every milestone of the loan, we're going to give you a status report. Um, and on Tuesday of every week, you're going to be getting a call from Jen and all my team, or me, and we're going to let you know what the latest and greatest is on the loan. So we're going to make sure that we're going to communicate. We're going to be as efficient as possible, and certainly we're going to get you to closing. And, and at that point, you're making these small promises. And then, you know, throughout the process, you want to say, hey, let's go out for a drink, or hey, let's go, out, let's go have lunch or coffee or whatever, whatever floats your boat, right? Me and a big happy hour. So I'm going to try to get him happy out. Yeah. But if you do all these little things yeah. and you hit him up for that appointment, then you get the appointment. That, it's just a no-brainer. Yeah. And, you, and you know, and you're so, so confident it's going to happen that when you're speaking to them, you're talking to them like with confidence and once again with abundance, right? As opposed to, can you please, you know, go ahead and hang out with me. I'd love to get to work with you. No, you should love to want to work with me because my process is that good. You, well, you've, you've earned the right to, when you're updating them and your communication is key, you've earned the right at the end or in the middle of the transaction because you also have to understand too, if you're listening to this, part of the sales process is listening to clues, when to ask for referrals, when to ask for a meeting. And man, by the second or third week, 
Dan, you guys are super consistent. Every Tuesday, every Friday, we get an update. Super impressive. I have to let you know that. Wow, Tina, thank you for the compliment. That means a ton. We put a lot of time on that, and it's not easy. Um, I'm just curious. Are you not seeing that? I don't ever say, is your lender not doing that? Because that makes them feel bad. I don't think that's the right way to say it. I've heard other mortgage coaches say, well, is your, is your current lender not doing it? No. I say, is that something that you're not seeing in the mortgage industry right now? And she's like, most of the time, no, this is incredible. Great. Let's wrap this up and let's check, let's check our schedules in the coming week and let me show you a little bit more about this and how we roll this out. And, and it, it just it up easy. so good. Yeah. And one more thing I'm going to say, Dan, like, you know, I always look at it from the standpoint, and, and that, that's perfect. You're going to do the appointment. But I look from the standpoint of, of not necessarily doing business with that listing agent, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to, like, pry them away from their lenders they're working with, right? Yeah. In a way, that's awesome. But I'm really trying to create a situation, a relationship. Even if I don't work with that with that listing agent, guess what? Yeah. They're probably going to be on the other side of the transaction at some point. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So if you set that up and you're solid, like, think about this. Like, you know, if, if you're going against multiple offer and mm -hmm. you remember the guy that sent the video and close on time and communicated all the way throughout, like, yep. oh, you're going to have a huge advantage of winning that off. And guess what? That yep. is the way of, of, of like providing value to you. Absolutely, man. Okay, well, we're going to wrap this up, Chong. One, I want to say thank you for bringing so much value. That was incredible. We have a few comments that I want to get to, Tina and a couple of other people. Um, I'm going to reply to them in the comments below um, okay. on social media just so that everyone has access to those. I want to make sure that you are tap, tapping into the Mortgage Coach community. If you have questions, post those, those questions. And professionals like Chong and myself and Dave and the hundreds of other incredible uh, professionals that are presented in this community will jump in and answer. Um, Dave comes live every single Tuesday. There's no other community in the mortgage industry doing what the mortgage coach community is doing in regards to bringing value. So plug into the Tuesday coaching sessions. We're going to have Renee Rodriguez. I plugged him a few minutes ago. I attended his event. We're going to have an event coming up this month where he's going to talk about how to amplify your message. So basically taking what Chong and I talked about today, tightening it up and really making it your own to help you close more transactions. So if you found today's uh, call valuable, give it a like. Um, if you have any questions, shoot us some questions. I know both Chong and I are here to help. And uh, we'll let Dave get back to his game. And I appreciate everything you're doing, Dave. You're incredible. Hey, one, one more thing, guys. Hey, one, one more thing, everybody, before we close it. I want to remind everybody that we're doing the uh, best testimonial contest. Yep. So the winner of Best Memorial Contest is getting an Apple Watch. They're getting iPods or AirPods, and they're getting an Apple iPod wow. or, Air, or iPad. So, I mean, we're talking a couple thousand dollars in Apple gear for the winner. And all you need to do is take a great example of you taking a testimonial or an online review that you got and then, you know, posting out on social media. And then sharing that actual marketing example in our Facebook group. So at the end of the month, we're going to be awarding the best example of marketing your testimonial or your online readers. So tag testimonial and make sure you participate in this contest. Take hey, care. Dan. Dan, you guys killed it. Chong, you're awesome. Thank you, guys. Calls are